Hey everyone, Cody here and welcome back to another painting tutorial type video, I guess. I don't know what you would actually call it because I don't know. But anyway, today I'm going to show you a mistake. And I know a lot of people don't like to show their mistakes, they just show all the good stuff. But uh, I'd actually like to show you my mistake because I think that and when I made it, I don't think I realized it, but then I made the same mistake today. This video that you're seeing is not a painting that I did today. Uh, it's a painting I did a few days ago. But I made the same mistake today, and I think I know what it is. Um, so we'll talk about that in just a second. So let's talk about the colors real quick. Um, the first color is rare turquoise. This is literally one of my favorite colors. I talk about it a lot in other videos. Um, it's just a really dark turquoise color. Uh, the other colors that I have today are Deep Sapphire, which is a dark blue, and then Gold, um, which I do not get the gold paint from Ten Edwards. It is Glidden, and I got it at Home Depot, so you can probably get uh, a gold paint as well if you're looking for it, at least a uh, gold house paint. So let's talk about the technique. So today I'm going to show you the, the sandwich painting technique. I showed this in my painting with that convergence alpha painting that I did that was orange, yellow, blue, black and white. Um, but we're going to talk about this in this as well. Okay. And again, I want to show you the mistake because a lot of people don't like to sh share their mistakes. And it wasn't until I did it again today. And then I kind of saw the mistake that I made that I realized what I had done. So uh, so for this technique, the, what I call the sandwich, uh, essentially what you do is just load down the top painting with a lot of paint so that when you crush it between, when you sandwich it between another piece of paper, uh, you know, it creates the, the painting. Now this painting is literally easier than acrylic pour because you can literally just put this paint on there and then just kind of crush it with another piece and you don't have to like, you know, put a bunch of paint in cups and dilute those cups and, you know, pour them and then drip them over the sides and do all this other stuff. A lot of people like to use those, those little butane torches or, you know, they like to blow it around with straws or whatever the heck they like to do. You don't have to do all that with, with these paintings. You literally just put your paint on the the paper, um, or I guess if you did another surface, you could do that too. Um, but you literally just put the paint on, get another surface of similar type, and then you just sandwich it. And I think my heat just kicked on. Oh well. Um, so you're really you're literally just gonna sandwich the paint between the two pieces. Now here I'm using a heavy board to kind of evenly distribute the paint um, which I think is kind of a good idea it, it seems to kind of work because then you could kind of push down on it and you're not pushing on just one part right um, but once I move the board then I kind of push it down with my hands and you can see at the very end like the edge where my hands are uh, you can see some white space so I mean it's not going all the way out to the edges um, now here's the problem that uh, that I realized. Okay, so when you paint, when you put the paint on the bottom one, if the whole thing is not covered with paint, and I realized this again earlier today, that if the whole paper is not covered in paint, you're gonna have these you know white spots where the canvas is showing through the painting because you had gaps. And even if you do a bunch of paint, then it's just going to leave gaps. So I had this idea that, okay, you know, I'll just roll the paint out and it will crush the painting between the two and that will cover the whole painting. And I think that that's where I made the mistake because, well, I have two mistakes actually. So the first is that I you know, crushed it with that can where I just kind of, I rolled it pretty heavily on the papers to kind of, you know, distribute the paint to get it to move. Um, and I think that's the first mistake because 
what I found is that once you lift the, the paper from doing this, it actually it crushes it too much and makes the paint flat. The second thing is that I had gaps in the first place. So if you have little gaps, then those are going to be there either way. And so you can see that it didn't create the little wave design that I really like. And I think it's because there wasn't enough paint, believe it or not. Um, I think also I pulled it off too slow. And I think I had, I should have like kind of peeled it off at an angle because that that's what creates the wave look. If you watch that video, um, then you would have seen that. Uh, that it, it creates the wave looks by pulling it at an angle. So the problem that I had here was that it didn't create the little waves, which if it had, it would have been exactly, I think, what I was looking for. But you can see at the bottom, kind of where there wasn't that much paint, you can see the little, I don't know, like veins almost running through it because it didn't do it. So I had this bright idea that, hey, I'll just put it back on and uh, you know we'll just squish it again to really get the paint to move uh, but it really did like nothing to help in fact I, I don't even know if it did help I don't, I don't know if it did anything really because the paint had already pulled between the two pieces so there really wasn't anything to to do with it so what I was trying to do was flatten it and then like you know shift it a little bit so that it would slide around and kind of fill in those gaps, you know, and kind of reset the the design on the, the paper itself. Um, but it didn't really do that a whole lot. So me putting this paper back on did almost nothing because you can see the gaps around the sides. And then as I pull it, you know, you can see that it's just not making those little waves. And, and believe it or not, I, I think it, again, it's because I didn't have enough paint um, but it was also very thick paint, so I don't think it was going to move. So it's like, okay, you know, if I can't get it to make the waves, which is the whole point of the painting, then I'll just scrape it, right? It's kind of like my my backup almost, because sometimes you can you can do this and and you can salvage the painting and you can get a decent painting out of it. But this one wasn't having it, and I don't know if it's just because the paint was already beginning to dry or just because it, the I think it was because the paint was so uneven because um, you can see uh, if you look where the gold is that gold is the bottom layer but then you can see the lines like the scrape lines that's from whatever's on the top so it's like be, because the paint wasn't even it wasn't scraping evenly and you know that really <laughs> really really drove me nuts and even bothered me so the little crisscrossy lines that you see in here you know those are from that's from the original paint that got dripped onto the paper you know it it soaked into the paper itself and so that's why you see the lines um, but you know I again I didn't know what else to do with it so I was like okay I'll just maybe scrape it and see if I can get you know like a decent scrape out of it but it didn't really happen I even tried going over it again just to kind of see if I can gain any traction on it and honestly it was just a no like it was just not happening the the blues just started running together so they just kind of made this almost like muddy blue and you know there was it wasn't very distinct so I, I, I kind of just accepted it and set it aside because I knew that it wasn't going to do anything. So, again, the two mistakes that I made were, one, I didn't use enough paint, um, or two, if I had used a little bit thinner paint, even just diluted a little bit to kind of get it to move or, and fill the edges, that would have worked a lot better. So, essentially, it was, you know, that I didn't use enough, but I was also too thick, um, and it created those gaps when I crushed it because the gaps weren't filled in the first place. So then it's like, okay, well, what else can I do? Obviously scraping is not gonna work. So what can I do instead? Um, and I realized that I could try to like stipple it basically. But the problem that, and again, I haven't made like a 
quote unquote stippled type painting that was one that I actually liked. Um, and I think it's because when you, you know, like stipple like this, it, it pulls the paint up from wherever you lift it. But then when you go to set it somewhere down, like down somewhere, then it mixes whatever you had on there to the, you know, to the plastic. It mixes whatever's on there to whatever you put it down on. So then you start to lose the distinct colors because then they start to blend together. And so the stipple, the stipple, you know, thing is it's a, again, it's a, you know, a unique idea that you could definitely try, but it has not been giving me good success just because once you do this uh, and all the little colors kind of, you know, pop over each other, you really lose them. So you can't even see, you know, really where it's going. Um, and then those colors kind of blend together. So you lose kind of the distinct colors. And for me, I don't like it cause it's hard to see. Uh, it's hard to see all the different colors with those little, I don't know, paint mountains <laughs> from, from the stipple, from the, the plastic so it's, it's really hard to see the individual colors because they start to run together every time you stipple and you you dip it down it picks up that color and then you set it down in another color and they they blend together and it starts to muddy those colors and then eventually it just kind of blurs together and i don't know maybe some people like it maybe you know i could probably still sell it or something but i'm not comfortable selling something i don't personally like um, if I don't find like a redeeming quality in it, then I usually just don't, don't bother selling them. And I don't think that this was worth it because I just couldn't, I couldn't, I didn't like it. So I couldn't bear my, couldn't bear to, uh, to sell it to someone else. I mean, it's just my integrity. I don't know. But it's not like there's not paintings that I hated that other people didn't like that I've sold, but quality wise, I just wasn't having it. So it is what it is. Um. But yeah, this is the finished piece. It's got some texture, which is cool, but I don't know. Just the overall look, I, I'm not a big fan of. So, I don't know. Maybe some people like that. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Again, I, I hope you learned something, and I hope you liked it. And uh, yeah, if you like it, like, rate, share, subscribe, and I will catch you guys in another video. Take care, guys.